Hey everyone, welcome back. In the last video, we learned Ignite Caching. We covered different aspects of Ignite Caching. And in this video, which builds on top of the last video, we will cover the data streaming. So if you haven't gone through the last video, please do so. And without wasting much time, let's start with the topic of this video, which is data streaming. So what is data streaming? Ignite provides an API for the data streaming, and we can use this API to ingest large amounts of data into the cluster. All right. Here, if you see the main goal of streaming is efficient and quick data loading. Once we push the data with the help of streamer, the data will be automatically organized and distributed between the nodes throughout the cluster in partition aware and parallel manner. So we don't have to handle these aspects. We simply need to push the data through data streamer. In the diagram, if you see, this is the data streamer. Here we are pushing all this data to the streamer key value pairs. And it's the responsibility of data streamer API that will process all this huge amount of data in data batches. It will store the data in partitioned way on different nodes in the cluster. And it also says that a data streamer is associated with a specific cache. All right. So in order to get the data streamer, we first need to have an Ignite cache. Once we have the cache, we can get the data streamer. And with the help of the data streamer, we can push that data into the Ignite cluster. It can also be used, let's say, in eager loading of the data for the cache so that we don't have to warm up the cache on demand. So let's see how we do that. So here we have the same code base. I've got a new feature. You can find the link in the description. This feature is available on the GitHub. And uh, we'll do the changes in this feature and I'll push the changes in the same feature branch. So let's see what we did so far. We modified the default data region with the help of data region configuration. Then we modified the cache. We basically provided some configurations related to the cache with the help of cache configuration. And we also enabled the native persistence, although it's not required for data streamer, but I'm just revisiting what we did so far. And here in the main class in, in this bean, we uh, modified the Ignite configuration. Then we started the Ignite cluster. And here we are creating the Ignite cache. And in order to showcase the data streamer, the usage of data streamer, we need to have some data that we want to ingest into the Ignite cluster. And to do that, I will create a dummy CSV file. This dummy file would have some data. We will read the data from this file. And with the help of data streamer, we will store that data into the Ignite cluster. So let me create that file. We'll go to the main resources folder. And uh, I will create that dummy file here. Will name result.csv. Okay. Let me copy the content that I have created. Here it is. So we have few entries in this result.csv file. The first one is student ID, the student name, the subject, and the number. And notice we have repeated IDs for the different subjects. All right. So here we have this result.csv file. So what we want to do when the server starts up, we want to read this file. We want to read the data. And with the help of data streamer, we will push this data into the Ignite cluster. So let me comment this one for now. Let me comment this one as well. So how do we start? We first need to have the Ignite data streamer. How do we create the data streamer? Well, we need to create the object of data streamer first. To do that, there is this class that we can use ignite data streamer. Let's provide the type parameters string and string ignite data streamer. And how do we create, how do we get the data streamer? Notice the documentation says that a data streamer is associated with a specific cache. And with the help of the ignite object, which is this one, let's check if we have any method to get the data streamer. Here it is. It says data streamer, which accepts an input parameter. What is this parameter? This parameter is the name of an Ignite cache. So let's provide a cache here and notice we have an existing cache configuration for the Ignite cache with the name dummy. We can reuse the same Ignite cache. So what Ignite will do, it will return a data streamer for this cache, for this Ignite cache. And once we have the data streamer, we can use the data streamer to write the entries to this cache. And what data we want to write here? Let's think about what kind of data we want to write here. We want to read the data from this result.csv file 
and we want to write these entries to the ignite cache so here once we have the data streamer we can play with the data we want to read the file let's start by reading the file how do we read the file we can use java.nio so parks.get let's pass the path of the file here so copy path reference we can copy the absolute path here it is once we have the path we can use the method files dot lines it accepts the path so we can pass the path here and this method returns the stream stream of data once we have the stream we can change the record we can change the stream let's say what we want to do notice this is a comma separated record it has four components four values what we want to store is the id and the number so in the map method we can do something simple like record dot split and this will return an array and once we have the array we can use this array to write the data with the help of data streamer so here we see the method supported by data streamer we have add data which accepts the key value we can pass it a map so that it can insert the data in bulk we can also pass an entry a collection allow overwrite we will see what allow overwrite means so let's use this method which is simple we have the array what we need is the first element and the last element of the array so we can do the first element and the last element what we are doing first we are getting the data streamer for this cache then we are reading the file and from the file we are picking the first element and the last element to store in the cache so that's all it takes to write the data into the cache with the help of data streamer and once the data is loaded we can read the data from the cache how do we read the data from the cache we need the ignite cache so i can copy this one here i can ask the ignite cache with the name dummy and once we have the data we can read the entries from this cache so let's say i say cache dot get and i want to get the number for the student with id 102 and if we pass it here and run the program let's see if we get the correct output and we see some value in the logs 92 let's verify the number here we see for the id 102 we should have two entries 92 and 88 but we only see the value 92 not the 88 and that's because by default it doesn't override the existing entries so because this is a duplicate entry the second entry it will not override the value 92 that's why we see the value 92 but in case we want to handle the duplicate entries we can ask the streamer to override the duplicate entries and how can we do that well let me first stop the application and remember the methods of the data streamer so we can say something like allow override to true so this will now override the duplicate values and if we rerun the program this time we see the value 88 which is the second value for id 102 so after setting the property it was free to override the existing value so that's all for this video in this video we covered the ignite data streamer we learned how can we use the data streamer to push huge amount of data large amounts of data into the ignite cluster that can be used later let's say for the ignite caching so that's all for now i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching